And we are back with Shark Motorsport in February 1980. We had our launch of our 1980 Amakua 2, um, which was highly celebrated for a while as we hit 340 miles per hour top speed in the car. Unfortunately, it was brought to our attention that uh, our aerodynamics were maybe not the best in the car. Um, at a certain point over 300 miles per hour, the car tended to flip. Uh, so yeah, we, we, we needed to correct that and uh, that, that's our first goal here is, uh, is adjusting some of, some of our uh, tuning in the car to make sure that it is not a risk to flip over and kill our customers. So with that being said, uh, you know, a few other things we need to look at here. Now that we're actually making some money, uh, we're pulling in four million a month thanks to the new Hammerhead, which is just spectacular. Uh, the Hammerhead, Coupe and Targa are pulling in $11 million a month profit on 400 units sold. So that, that's some nice healthy margins right there. Um, 150 percent yeah we'll take that uh, as you can see this should be even higher given that this is 11 million and this is 1.7 but we are spending heavily on research and marketing to try to catch up to the competition uh, you know marketing is now 25 percent of our expenses at almost 5 million and research is 3.43 so the things that we did, uh, now that we do have a good cash flow, to try to ramp up our research, you know, we, we put a little bit more into the top three here, um, and we really want to get into turbos. So we got a plus three on the turbos. Hopefully we're going to get these technologies unlocked as quickly as we can. The body we've bumped up to a plus four, and aerodynamics is now a plus five. So a total of 3.43 million in R&D, which is a lot of money given the size of our company. Marketing, we totally revamped our marketing. Uh, we're, we're finished with Havasia. Uh, it's, we are now, this is the little sliver of the pie that Havasia will get for our marketing budget. We, we just aren't selling anything there. Um, they do not like our sport and supercars. Uh, yeah, so we're going huge into Gesmia. Half of our budget almost is going to be Gesmia as we've only been there for about eight to ten years. Uh, Fruinia, obviously our core, our home country, is about 25 percent and then about 20 percent is going to Dalua. Which, and this is a big budget to go to Dalua because it's a small market to, so to spend this much money on a small market uh, should pay off pretty big. Uh, as you can see, this is already starting to look pretty good here. Yeah, Arcana. I don't even know if they know we exist. So we waited a little bit to save up a little bit more money. Um, and then we are doing a facelift on the Ocean 2. Actually, the other thing we are waiting for is the multi-point EFI. Um, we wanted to get that implemented uh, and to fix the Amakua's um, aerodynamic issue, as mentioned earlier. The Hammerhead will get the facelift to the new engines, but not until a little bit later. Um, there's really not much it's upgrading, so it's only going to take about two years. Um, so we'll, we'll do that probably in early 1982. We'll start that facelift to launch in December of 83 with the engine and the Amakua. You can see our income is down to a million a month. This was on purpose. You know, we're still making a boatload of money on these two models, uh, you know, 13 million combined. Our company value has skyrocketed for us to 71 million. Um, but half of our expenses are research and marketing. Six million on marketing, five million on research. All 
All right, so for the 5 liter, uh, you know, we didn't do much other than changing it to the EFI, as they both will be multi-point EFI. We have increased the power to 400 horsepower, 383 torque, which for cars in the early 80s is pretty nice. That's a pretty nice engine to have in a GT car. For our 6.2 liter turbo, uh, we are around the same power that we had. Uh, there's no reason to really bump that up yet. Uh, 2,160 horsepower, 1,330 torque. Um, but again, the engine change was the biggest part. Um, you know, that's gonna take about three years. Really just that technology uh, is why it's taking so long. the engine costs so now you're starting to see a big gap you know this is our GT model 5 liter V12 at $6,400 where our insane quad turbo version is over 10 grand so this total project is going to cost us 32 million which we have more than enough in cash with a positive cash flow so there's no reason to do a loan on this. So here our facelift just launched for the Hammerhead and Amakua 2. Um, you can see our, our we've kept our loans very low. This is old loans at $2 million. We've upped our research and marketing a little bit more. We are now spending $13 million combined. But we're making even more on these two cars now. So, you know, we were making about 13 million combined before, now we're making 18 million. Uh, the Hammerhead is just, just doing an amazing job for us, pulling in 17 million a month. Um, we've kept the margins around 150% on that. And the Amakua Supercar, the margins are lower, only 86%, but we're, you know, for an $80,000 car, we're still making almost 2 million a month profit on this thing. So despite these expenses, we're still pulling in 3 million a month now. Have uh, close to 40 million cash and company value of 79 million. So what we're probably gonna do here, you know, there's not really any of this that's gonna, well, that this could help us with the engine for the facelift. But there's nothing we're gonna change that's too big um, coming up. So we're, we're gonna sim a year or two until this becomes available, the VVT. Uh, and then we'll do the engine upgrade, which will probably be the last facelift. It'll be a longer facelift for the 1990 world's fastest car uh, and see what we can get out of it. So we did, we simmed a couple of uh, years here, and uh, you might notice that we are making even more on these cars, 23 million combined. We've raised the pricing on the GT and the supercar. We're at 85,000 now for our Amakua, and the Hammerhead is raking in a nice 170% margin, and we still cannot make enough of them. Uh, we are, you know, selling, about 550 a month and that's all we are making and that factory is actually these both say Amakua I should probably change that so this one at the 2.1 is the new Amakua factory this one uh, the Vita factory is actually producing the hammerhead now so that's a 2.4 shifts and we're just keeping up so this is where, I've talked about it before, my strategy for a company like this is not to increase the factory size. You know, when, when you increase the factory size, it's tough to go backwards. It takes a lot of time, shuts down, you know, the machines and everything like that. We're already at a small firm, so we would actually have to buy new land and make a medium factory. Uh, we're not producing a car that we want to make that many of. Uh, so instead, I just keep raising the prices. You know, this car used to sell for 30 grand and 40, 45, 50. And the more you raise the price, the more profit you make. So, you know, if we go to a medium factory, we're gonna have to lower this price. 
So we might actually end up making the same profit on a medium one as we are on a small three because of the prices that we can charge for it. So there, there's a time and a place to, you know, do that to actually expand your business. But to me, it's, it's not right here. Um, we need to keep the expenses down and focus on the Yamakua, which is what we did. So this is our final facelift. This is the car that we'll launch and hopefully sell a few of for $19.90. Uh, so we, we also did make another change. The base engine that the Hammerhead model gets is now a 6.2 liter. Um, we just figured there's no reason to detune your, to cut down the engine to a 5 liter. We'll just make it a 6.2 just without the turbo. So it's now producing 525 horsepower and 479 torque uh, for our GT model, which is just insane for the era, for 1985. <laughs> Meanwhile, our turbo is at 2,760 horsepower, 1,770 torque. Uh, you know, we, we've got a few issues here. It's not too bad though. I mean, you know, negative 14% stress on the Conrad. Um, our reliability is still 27. Probably could have done more here. I'm sure our competition is pushing this to the 5% limit, um, or the 5.0 limit, I should say. But we just, we weren't seeing the gains in the car. Um, this is kind of where we capped out at for, for now, for our 1990 launch. We'll see if we can do more in the future. But, you know, the more power we added, we just weren't seeing the speed gains on the car. We are billet steel now, um, which was actually a pretty huge help. As you can see, if we go to forge, this goes to zero. So the billet steel is huge for reliability, as it gives you extra wiggle room on uh, what you can do to the to the engine. We're revving at 8,800 RPMs, which is not bad for a turbo engine. Still with the quad turbos. We don't have too much technology. We've got boost control, and that's about it. The ball bearing. Uh, you know, this is full out multi point EFI per cylinder configuration, race intake, super unleaded, tubular race exhaust, uh, none of this, five inch pipes. Those things are massive. <laughs> That is, that's insane. Those, those are just massive pipes. All right, just to show you what we did on the hammerhead, um, you know, why it's selling so well. Uh, so this is the, the coupe model with the 525 horsepower. Uh, as you can see here, it's, you know, just good across the board. You know, for 1985, it's got a 65 prestige, 43 safety, it's got good comfort while still being sporty and good drivability. Um, you know, 3,400 pounds is still pretty lightweight, at least well, compared to modern era cars. So we did, we switched to the advanced automatic. Uh, just the GT market loves it versus the manual. Does have all wheel drive as well. So it doesn't need any kind of you know, differential clutched uh, geared, anything like that. So we're just sticking with an open differential. Sport tires, magnesium, just for the prestige. Uh, latest technology and all this. Handmade interior, luxury cassette. Yeah, it's we did stick with the manual steering still. The the hydraulic, as you can see when I click on it here. You know, we, we gain about four points in comfort, one and a half in drivability, but we lose eight points in sportiness. That's that's a pretty big drop there. Uh, you know, not much else here is affected. Your gas mileage gets hit. Um, you know, it's heavier, cost goes up, engineering and production go up. So we've got comfort and drivability from the all-wheel drive 
uh, and the handmade seats and all that. So I think this was a good compromise to stick with the manual rack and pinion. Went with the air adaptive springs and dampers. Didn't get too aggressive here. All right, so for the GT market, we're showing desirability of 358, premium 415%. This is why they're selling for what they're selling for. We can charge whatever we want. Um, you know, we've we've got some pretty big penalties. You know, our price is still lower, well, on that one at least, but here, on both of them, our body age, 9% penalty, and we're still crushing the market. All right, now for the new one, the Amakua 3. So our old Amakua 2 will be uh, retired, and the Amakua 3 will replace it. We stuck with the same game plan for this, which is mid-engine. So this is the body we decided to go with, uh, the 1990 sports car here. We uh, have a little bit of a fitment issue down here. Um, you know, I, I would not go on any road but a track. And uh, even a track is going to be very scary with the half inch of clearance that you have from the ground to the pipes down there. Um, you know, five inch exhaust pipes, that's... Uh, it's a bit tricky to, to configure that along with a 6.2 liter V12 quad turbo in this, this little car. Uh, but, but it worked. We, we did it. It was an engineering masterpiece here. We uh, have our 5-speed manual as normal, geared LSD. Uh, you can see our top speed is going to be around... 370 to 380 based on what we're seeing here so we actually we did switch to semi slicks um, I was playing around with hard long life medium compound and all these and I, I didn't really get any advantage anymore um, even if it said I got a mile per hour two more when I went to the test track it was the same uh, so no reason not to go with the semi slicks now Fully clad, uh, we uh, we thought about sport under tray, but if you see this here, see engineering time 154.9. If I click on sport under tray, remember this is a brand new model, 330. So it just doubles the engineering time. And considering we need this car to come out in four years, that's not going to happen. So we're we're going to stick with semi clad for this. We, uh, we had to change the front wing angle so that our car no longer flips at around 300 miles an hour. And, uh, you know, we just made it as close as we could here. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what kind of results we get. And that does obviously impact your top speed, having to put this angle up. Alright, so Duluth Salt Pan. Speed this up. even number 380 miles per hour uh, so our, our last car did 340 and uh, same engine new body some tweaks to the engine uh, we're at 380 miles per hour uh, for a car that will launch in December of 1989 here we are with the launch 
Uh, struggled a bit financially right before launch. Seems to be a reoccurring thing with our company, with Shark Motorsport. As you can see, the month into the launch here, we lost $27 million, uh, which is from engine factory construction and car factory construction. Uh, so this is not going to continue this next month. In fact, that should be it. Um, cars worked out really well. We have two left in stock uh, of the old Amakua model. So perfect timing for the new one to come out, which we've got a ton of pre-orders. Nine and a half months at 165000 Yeah, our last model was selling for like 85000 And this one is now 165000 uh, 157% margin. And we have 453 pre-orders, which is nine and a half months of backlog on it. These we've also raised, 77000 and 80000 um, So these are almost as much as the old Amakua was. Uh, margins are insane on the Hammerhead now. 240% and 250%. Still in the small three factory. So let's sell the last two cars of this because that usually will hang around forever if you don't. And uh, let, let's make sure that we sold one of the new 380 mile per hour cars. There it is. Alright, so we simmed the final month of 1989 and we were able to deliver 52 Amakua 3s. Um, sold another 35 at this huge price. So this is going to come down quick. Um, you know, we're, we're only selling 35 a month and we're producing 55. Uh, this is, this number is going to be within a year or two, we're going to be, you know, back to even. So hopefully the sales will increase during that time so that we do not have to reduce this price. Uh, this car is, you know, as I said, insane. It's even with the higher pricing, 250% margin, we sold 671 of them and could only produce 634. And that's with 2.3 shifts, which we can raise a little, but then you're putting stress on the factory. So we're going to raise this price. We'll be in the 80s on our GT car now. That's already pulling in 36 million a month. One car model out of a small three factory is going to be pulling in over $40 million a month profit for us. This is how Ferrari, Lamborghini like to do business. So other than that, um, our, our research budget is now $11.5 a month. Our marketing is 13 and a half. So we are spending $25 million on R&D and marketing and putting away 13. Um, but there, there's no reason to hang on to it. The future of the company depends on those two things. You gotta stay relevant by marketing and you, you gotta have the technology. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we did take a small loan. Uh, as you could see with those factories, costs we had of upgrading, um, I think it was the ocean that we ended up, we, had, we needed more engines. Uh, so we did take a small loan, I believe this was a 36 month. So it'll, you know, by the time our new facelift is out, that'll be paid off and with, this much income now, we won't have to take another one. I think I keep saying that though. Um, but you know, when you have low interest rates, sometimes you take it just to be safe. Here in the R&D tab, we have increased these tremendously. Um, we've gone full out with the engine now, just getting everything we can. Cause I mean, all these categories do matter. Uh, some more than other, but they all help you a bit. Uh, and here with the the cars, uh, you know, arrow and body is at a plus seven. And this gets super expensive from here. You know, if, if we go from a plus seven to a plus eight, uh, that's almost two million dollars a month that that will do. And, and we'll do it. I mean, we still have 13 million a month now that we're going to be making. So, you know, if we go to an eight on body and arrow, that's, you know, we'll still be around 10 million here. 
So that, that's something we're going to definitely look at. We have some arrow options that came available and a few more that will be available soon. And, you know, we're, we're almost into 2000 technology here in 1990. We can make a new car body in the 90s. Um, we might look into replacing our GT model. The Hammerhead might get a new one because we just launched a new Amakua. That'll probably stay the same for the 2000 fastest car in the world. Um, I mean, we might look into some of these and see what happens, but you know, there's some nice uh, GT options that we can uh, choose from coming out. I don't know, these might be, it's probably too far ahead. Now with the marketing, I was a little surprised with a few things. Um, as you can see here, I'm actually putting a lot into safety in these countries. Even if they don't care, you know, if this is showing it's not a big factor to them, it's still a big factor to the markets we're trying to hit. So, you know, GT 2.4, if I go down on this, it goes down to 2.2 increase. That's a huge jump for a small cost. So even though the country doesn't care that much, the target market still does. So don't always look at these graphs here and go solely by, well, they don't care at all about comfort. Well, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to sell in a GT market? Because they still do care about it. Just not as much as maybe a different country, but you still got a market there. Um, you know, that's something new I learned in this campaign, is I used to follow this too much. I used to basically go by what is the country like in these graphs and what am I making? So if I'm making sports cars and they like sports cars, I'm just putting a 10 into sportiness marketing. Um, not thinking that, you know what, one of my models is GT and I'm not advertising much at safety or comfort and GT cares about safety and comfort. Um, so that was a big learning experience. I've also learned a lot about these. These can play a huge factor, way more than I ever thought they would. Um, and everything, you know, you, you can change these up if you need to hit a different market. So like here, if I wanted to start hitting muscle because we're only at 49% and we're at 75% GT, I could change this smoothness to power and all of a sudden this slows down we went from like 2.6 to 1.96 but the muscle went up a lot so I'm still gaining in GT but now this muscle is going to increase a lot faster than it was so that's always something to look at when you're doing your marketing is is play around with these see what areas you need to hit more and try to target those areas 